The final rounds of the F4 British Championship, certified by FIA, powered by Ford EcoBoost, arrived at Brands Hatch with the main two title protagonists, Zach O'Sullivan and Luke Browning, tied on points at the top of the table. The fans were in for a decider that would go all the way to the last race of the season. So let's have a look how they line up for round 24 of the 2020 Formula 4 British Championship. And it's Luke Browning that secured pole position for this race, Zach O'Sullivan alongside. The rookie, Christian Mantle, could wrap up the rookie championship here. He lines up third, a return to British F4 for Roberto Faria. And he is in for the Fortec car and will be helping Luke Browning to try and secure the Fortec uh, the team trophy for Fortec Motorsport. James Headley is next from Alex Connor. That completes the third row of the grid. The fourth row, Abby Pulling with Frederick Lubin, Frederick the second of the rookies. Roman Belinsky on row five. Then it's Matthias Sacaseta, Casper Stevenson on row six with Rima Jafali completing the grid. So a tie on points, 369 points shared by Zach O'Sullivan and Luke Browning coming into this final meeting of the season, but 75 points still on offer. O'Sullivan notionally on countback, the championship leader, he has eight wins, the man on the outside of the front row. Luke Browning has six, but countback only comes into play if they are tied on wins, it goes back to the number of uh, wins first if they're tied on points, then the second place is third places, and so on and so forth. You can see Roberto Farrier, the Fortec white and red car, just lining up, pointing slightly downhill, as is the 27 car of Alex Connor. And again, that is a, a sensible thing to do in single seaters to try and get the best of the start downhill. Iconic shot of single-seaters at Brands Hatch. Away we go, Luke Browning looks across. Now let's see whether Browning's going to get the lead as they go. Into Paddock Hill Bend, he does. And it is Browning that takes the initiative as they go into Paddock for the first time. Super start by Roberto Farrier, side by side at the moment with Christian Mansell. James Headley in fifth place right behind them. But it's Browning leading, O'Sullivan second place. Headley's going around the outside line of Farrier, who has annexed third place. This is going to be good team points for Fortec here. A little bit of a slide from Mansell. He can afford to lose a couple of places and hold on to the rookie championship lead. He has had a race win, of course, this year, but uh, hoping to wrap up the rookie cup in this one. And I'll fill you in on the points. We've got 20 minutes of action, hopefully non-stop. We don't want any safety cars if we can help it at all. And uh, we'll catch up on points as the race continues. Faria running a little bit wide. James Headley, race winner at Thruxton, goes through on the inside line. Oh, they tangle, but they managed to sort it all out. That could have ended in tears, but Farrier's got the run on the outside line. Christian Mansell coming up as well. Very tough, close battling between the pair of them. Abby Pulling is closing in as well. Headley's got the inside as they go into Paddock. Headley sends it down the inside line and tags Farrier. They're both spinning around. They're out of the gravel. Oh, in goes the 67 car. Has he got enough momentum? He has. Miraculously, enough momentum for Headley to come out of the gravel. And that was such a shame between the two of them. Hopefully we'll get another look. But at the moment, it's Luke Browning, the race leader, Zach O'Sullivan, P2. Those guys well clear of the third-place car, Christian Mansell. This is the first incident. So coming up through the Clark curve, you can see that on the inside line, James Headley, it's so wet and greasy out there, a little slip, nothing malicious in that, but Headley was looking on the inside line, trying to come through. And this is the one at Paddock again. Headley just goes a little bit too far up the inside line, tags the Fortec 7 car of Roberto Faria, and both of them spin around. Thankfully, they carry on. This is the first incident again. So a little clash, just you can see the car's right on the edge. Could have collected if it had gone nasty. Christian Mansell and Abby pulling right behind them as well, down across the line. This leads into the next one, so Headley decides to have another look. You can see Farrier was, was crossing up, going into Paddock Hill Bend, so it didn't look the most stable, and then just tagged but a little bit further back. So round they go, James Headley fourth in the championship, not in contention for the overall crown. Today, as Roberto Farrier starts to look down the inside line, 18-year-old Mexican was 
runner-up in the third F3 race last weekend. Goes on the inside line with James Headley looking on the outside. These two still locked in battle. These are very evenly matched drivers. And it's Faria who runs a little bit wide there. Headley sees a gap on the inside line. Should nip through as they come up into Druids. He does. So James Headley back in front of Roberto Faria. Clean racing, as you can see, between the two of them at the moment. And Headley again, a little bit of slide as he came out of Druids and starts to head down Granville Bend. I'd like to talk about what Roberto Faria did last weekend, a little bit later on, as Sagazetta has a look. Now coming up into Surtees. Tries to close up on Casper Stevenson. And Stevenson runs wide. Sagazetta sees the gap on the inside line and goes through. Great move by Sagazetta up into eighth place. Super move. And maybe the 17 year old Peruvian starting to get a little bit of confidence now in the car. It'd be lovely to see him back for a second season for next year. Lose the rookie plate on the front of the car. Come back and have a go. Headley, meanwhile, has broken clear of Farrier, the fourth of the cars we're looking at. Looking to try and get ahead of Casper Stevenson. There is Christian Mansell, though. Still the battle continuing here for ninth place. And James Headley tees up the inside line at Paddock Hill Bend. Got that one. Notice of intent very early on. Comes down the inside line. And he's got the track now. Roberto Farrier sees a gap as well. Tries to close in. what was being threatened for a while down the inside line goes Roberto Faria Casper Stevenson not looking happy at all this weekend got away from him a little bit there so Roberto Faria now up into 10th place and that gives him a point and side by side action here and this is James Headley this is a significant move for Headley goes up into 6th place that's provisional pole at the moment for race 2 Headley passes Frederick Lubin into the top half of the field, recovering after that moment at Paddock Hill Bend. So a good, gritty recovery drive from James Headley. We knew that was in him, didn't we, after the hat-trick at Thruxton. So Headley up into P6, Frederick Lubin down to seventh, and that's the car we could be seeing on pole tomorrow. The gap has gone out to seven tenths now, so Luke Browning, I think, has responded in the late stage. Luke Browning here is going to be absolutely crucial for him they were tied on points coming into the race they will have this should be the last lap as they cross the line now so Luke Browning will pull a seven point lead if he gets it round very mindful of the curse of the commentator on some of these drivers but it's O'Sullivan chasing O'Sullivan still with the most wins eight wins this will pull Browning up to seven wins but again closing up as they do the breaking into Druids. Browning will extend the lead as they go down the hill through Graham Hill Bend, making sure not to take too much in terms of track limits there. They don't. Luke Browning very mindful of that. Now coming up into Surtees, O'Sullivan has mounted a late challenge, but he's not close enough here in my book. And you can see that Browning not defensive at all. Using that outside line will come through Park Curve and onto the Brabham straight for the last time. So Luke Browning, he knows he's got the win, punches the end with delight before he even hits the straight and takes the win. It is Luke Browning with win number seven of the season, grabs the championship lead from Zach O'Sullivan and we wait for Christian Mansell who will sew up the rookie championship, completing the podium. Our 2020 provisional rookie champion, Christian Mansell, third place, Abby Pulling is fourth. James Headley is going to get the fastest lap. There's Alex Connor. Connor in fifth. Here is the sixth place man. James Headley, fastest lap and sixth position. And that means that he has got pole position provisionally for race two. Here's the result. Luke Browning wins round 24 of the championship by just over half a second from Zach O'Sullivan. Christian Mansell third, and he wraps up provisionally the rookie championship. Abby pulling fourth from Alex Connor. James Headley in sixth with the fastest lap. Seventh was Frederick Lubin from Roman Belinsky. Matthias Sagazetta in ninth, and the points finish is completed by Roberto Faria. Eleventh was a rather unhappy looking Casper Stevenson, and twelfth, Rima Jafali. Cracking race from the Air Force, the CTC back driver, Luke Browning, of course. We 
got to know Luke through the Janetta Junior Championship. And there is that path now, isn't there? We're seeing a lot of drivers coming through Janetta Junior into F4. Here's how the championship standings head into the final day of the season. A seven-point gap. Luke Browning leads. Zach O'Sullivan is in second. Now officially out of contention for the championship. But still third is Casper Stevenson from James Headley. Alex Connor fifth from Abby Pulling. Roman Belinsky seventh ahead of Christian Mansell. Roberto Farrin ninth. And Frederick Lubin in tenth. Congratulations, Luke. The, the celebration's there. I can tell how much that one meant to you. Pretty crucial win. Yeah, that was massive. Yeah, I mean, double pole to start the day off, and then, we, you know, we just got a brilliant start. It's notoriously hard to start from a P1 at Brands Indy, and, yeah, we got a brilliant start and just managed to manage the gap to Zach. So, yeah, that's it's looking brilliant for the championship. Obviously, back in the lead now, just to uh, consolidate that in the reverse grid race and hopefully finish it off with a win in the end. Well, obviously, the the, the, the tricky thing about the reverse grid race is that, uh, is that Zach's going to be starting ahead of you on, on that one. How much of a concern is that? I mean, I think I've got a slightly better grid spot than him. Um, so, you know, it might be a little bit more difficult for him to get up a line, so that might help me out. But um, other than that, it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be a really interesting race. I think, you know, the reverse good races are always interesting, and especially when it starts to come wet. Zach, um, P2 in this one. Um, what were your thoughts on that race? I mean, you were hunting Luke down in the closing stages, but it just uh, not quite enough time to, to catch and pass him. Uh, yeah, it's tricky. I don't think we were ever, ever going to fully catch him. It's so hard to overtake around here. Um, we were more or less exactly the same pace um, from that one. We both got the same start um, and we were lining us down for the rest of the race. I think we pulled quite a big gap on the rest of the field. Um, but yeah, just couldn't quite get him in the end. So um, we've got the partially reversed uh, grid is the first race, first of your two races tomorrow. That start is going to be quite key, really, isn't it, to, to keep that position uh, ahead? Yeah, exactly. Um, the whole weekend is about finishing as high as possible, obviously. Um, yeah, no change in approach. Keep on doing what I'm doing. Um, if the result isn't there, it isn't there, as we saw in the scene yesterday. Um, but yeah, we'll see how it goes tomorrow. Let's have a look at how they line up for the penultimate race of the 2020 F4 British Championship season. Frederick Lubin on pole, Alex Connor alongside. Abby Pulling and Christian Mansell on row two. Zach O'Sullivan and Luke Browning on the third row. Roman Belinsky next up from James Headley, Matthias Sacasetta and the returning Roberto Faria on row five. Next up, Casper Stevenson, the grid completed by Rima Jafali. Now, the news is, not surprisingly, now, although we've got blue skies here, which is a very welcome sight here at Pans Hatch to try and dry things out, we are actually going to have a safety car start. So that's a sensible decision by the race organisers, particularly when you consider that we may have, and I mean this respectfully, slightly slower cars at the, at the head of the field. Little reminder of the point situation. They were tied coming into the weekend, but Luke Browning, by virtue of his win over Zach O'Sullivan in race number one, takes a seven-point lead into this one. Casper Stevenson still third in the championship, but officially out of the running now for the overall title. But there are still 50 championship points still up for grabs. Now, because this is a re reverse, a partial reverse, Zach O'Sullivan has the upper hand on the start. So Luke Browning is probably one of the drivers who's going to be regretting this single file start because he potentially here could lose some points over Luke Browning with Luke having this... Uh, start the one thing uh, over Zach O'Sullivan rather ahead of him. The one thing we know about Luke is that he likes the wet weather. The other thing we know is that he likes to make a move and attack. So he's going to have to be a little bit circumspect here, because obviously if he mistimes something in terms of the of the uh, of the move and throws it away, this could be a little bit of a problem for him. So 18 minutes, which is actually underway. This is including the green flag laps, which these are the sighting laps for the cars. So we'll watch for the safety car lights to go out. The lights are going to go out on this lap, so we are being told. And it's Frederick Lubin, who's been in this situation before, who starts on pole. It's the two Arden runners, two 16-year-olds. Frederick Lubin uh, confirmed as runner-up in the rookie standings. The rookie champion is Christian Mansell, who took a podium yesterday and wrapped up the rookie championship. He lines up fourth on the grid. We're looking to try and improve on his results as well. And then immediately behind them, Abby Pulling. Good to see Abby here. He should be used to a rolling start with the, uh, her karting experience, as indeed most of the drivers will be. There is Abby. 
course, most of the drivers have karting experience in the field. And uh, Abby, welcome back to F4 for her, having raced in Formula Renault Euro Cup at Imola since our last meeting at Snetterton. So, when is Frederick Lubin going to go on this safety car start of the race? He'll be looking in his mirrors just to see what Alex Connor, his teammate, is up to and trying to pick the right moment to go. Still going from side to side himself. He doesn't seem to be in a hurry to go at the moment. The rest of them bunching up and he goes now. Remember, they're not allowed to pass until they go across the start-finish line. And Alex Connor, already giving notice of intent, comes out of the slipstream, goes to the outside line as they go into Paddock Hill Bend, but not quite close enough to do anything. Abby Pulling's going to have a look up the inside line. He'll make it through Paddock first time. Lubin runs wide, loses the lead. Alex Connor through. Abby Pulling goes through as well, but Fred Frederick's trying to close back in on the inside line. Let's see whether Frederick can hang on to second position as they come down the hill. He's got the inside line in Scram Hill Bend. And Abby Pulling here is going to be brave uh, to go around the outside line and will try. She'll get momentum now as they go along Cooper Strait. We've got Christian Mansell coming up as well, the blue car with the red mirrors. Then Zach O'Sullivan in fourth. O'Sullivan clear of Luke Browning at the moment. Fifth place at the moment for O'Sullivan, who looks up the inside line. O'Sullivan trying to get past his teammate, went the inside, now going on the outside line to find the grip. Three wide as they come through clearways. So we've got safety car, I believe. The yellow flag's there. They need to sort themselves out. Quite how you sort out fifth position, I don't know. But they go across the line now. Was Zach O'Sullivan ahead? We've got one of the Fortec cars in the gravel. I think that might be Roberto... Farrier. Well, disappointment, it's uh, Sagazetta in his Farrier, and that car is Matthias Sagazetta, who was quick in testing this week, coming into the uh, meeting. Now we're going to see the two cars go. We were rightly focused on the race leader. Sagazetta tags Roberto Farrier going into Paddock, and Farrier's returned. That, by my math, should mean I think that Carl in here, assuming both cars finish, Christian Mansell and Zach O'Sullivan will wrap up the Team Cup. So we're going to have to keep our eyes on notifications from the F4 media team to see whether that is indeed the case. Yep, safety car lights are now off, so we're getting ready for our second safety car start. The first one was the official start. and Let's see whether Alex Connor can make a good job of getting things underway for the remaining eight minutes of the race. The two championship protagonists running in fourth and sixth position at the moment. Fourth place, Zach O'Sullivan for Carlin. Sixth position, Luke Browning for Fortec. Safety car will go into pit lane. Let's have a look and see when Alex Connor will make the break. Looks like he's waiting for exactly the same point as Frederick Lubin did. Maybe Frederick's start was slightly the better of the two if we were going to avoid the points, but it's a good start by Alex Connor, who leads them away. You can still see the spray being kicked up now and down into second place Abby Pulling through into P2 great move by Pulling now we've got Christian Mansell on the inside line of Zach O'Sullivan and Luke Browning's coming up the white and red car number 11 Luke Browning is challenging his arch rival here they're having a classic battle here Pulling loses out, but we've got Zach O'Sullivan coming through. O'Sullivan challenging Lubin, and Luke Browning right the way around the outside. Browning doesn't necessarily need to do this, but he is an absolute racer, and the two championship battling uh, protagonists side by side as they come along Cooper Strait, and Luke Browning has got the inside line as they come up in towards Clearway. Zach O'Sullivan runs a little bit wider here, looking for the grip on the outside line, so too does Browning now, on the inside line is the Aussie Christian Mansell, and Abby pulling off to getting into second place, dropping back at the moment, right in the spray this is the battle of the second, Frederick Lubin there, Zach O'Sullivan dives down the inside line, has he got the speed to do this, Frederick Lubin I think has seen him, and round the outside goes Luke Browning, trying to explore for more grip, Browning now on the inside line of Lubin Browning needs to stay in touch with Zach O'Sullivan. It's going to be a straight shootout. If it stays like this, it'll be a straight shootout between these two in the final race of the season. Later on this afternoon, it really is setting us up for a superb championship. But what about Alex Connor, the 16-year-old based in Saudi, getting away? And this is going to be a, a super end towards the, well, towards the end of the championship season for him as he looks for win number three. So Christian Mansell now busy 
challenging Frederick Lubin. Lubin leaves the uh, door open and his, his rival in the rookie championship goes through. Frederick's going to have a look back on the inside line here. Again, you can see the spray being kicked up as they come through Clark Curve onto the Brabham straight. Both of these drivers, of course, first-year drivers denoted by the yellow backgrounds of the numbers. It would be super to see them coming back into F4 next year. We have already had a driver announcement for F4 next year as James Headley now tries to attempt to pass on his teammate, goes through on the inside line. Headley makes the pass. That is for sixth position. Abby pulling down to seventh. Did run in seventh place. Are we going to see the chequered flag out this time or will it be a last lap ball? We need to keep our eyes on it in case the organisers call this one uh, slightly earlier. I think we should squeeze another lap out of it as they go along the straight once again. There's the last lap board, so we know exactly where we are. And O'Sullivan is right with him as they go into paddock, but it's Alex Connor soaking up the pressure still. James Headley now with the fastest lap of the race coming through from towards the back of the field. And Connor sees the 51 number, have a little look offline, couldn't quite get close enough to make the move up the inside line. Down into Graham Hill Bend they go again, and Alex Cotter has driven a super race here, did the hard work to get past Frederick Lubin earlier on, built a bit of a lead, and has seen that eroded away very quickly by Zach O'Sullivan, but Zach just not having that advantage. Although, having said that, he closes up as they go into Surtees, and we'll maybe look at the inside line here, they'll drift by, maybe look for grip on the outside line, here comes O'Sullivan on the inside, but where is the grip? It's with the 27 car on the outside line as they come through Clark Curve onto the Bradford straight, and it's going to be Alex Connor to take a third win of the season. Connor for Arden, the Red Arrow takes the chequered flag, it's the Carlin Motorsport car of Zach O'Sullivan next, Luke Browning is in third place, then Christian Mansell, fourth position in car 21, James Headley holds on to fastest lap and fifth position right the way to the flag. Roman Belinsky chasing Rima Jafali. Rima takes the two points for ninth place and the single solitary point for Roman Belinsky after a hard race between those two. But it is the British schoolboy Alex Connor actually goes to school in Saudi when he can get out there. 16 years of age, wins the penultimate race of the 2020 Formula 4 British Championship. It's how they finished. Alex Connor takes his third win of the season over Zach O'Sullivan. Luke Browning third from Christian Mansell and James Headley in fifth. Frederick Lubin sixth from Abby Pulling. Casper Stevenson in eighth. Rima Jafali ninth. The final point going to Roman Belinsky. Two early casualties in that race. Matthias Sacasetta and Roberto Faria. One more race to go in the... 2020 British F4 Championship campaign. Luke Browning has a four-point lead over Zach O'Sullivan. They will start side-by-side side in the front of the final grid of the year. Casper Stevenson is third from Alex Connor. James Headley is fifth. Abby Pulling next up from Roman Belinsky. Christian Mansell, the rookie champion, is eighth from Frederick Lubin. Roberto Faria completing the top ten. First of all, Alex, congratulations, you had to soak up some pressure there. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, it was a tough race, very slippy, but yeah, ended well, which is good. Tell us about conditions out there, because uh, finding the right line, especially in these drying conditions, is a bit of a challenge. Uh, yeah, it, it's quite tough, the track was drying, so you had to try something different every single lap. Uh, but yeah, I, I found uh, some good lines through, through the first sector, which helped me a lot. Third win of the season, and sum up uh, how the season has been in general for you. Uh, it's been quite good. Uh, a lot of bad luck through the season, but, you know, it is what it is, and I'm happy to win here. Well, you're finishing with a smile on your face. I yeah. think there's a smile on your face behind that yeah, mask. 100%. Alex, well done. Let's bring in Zach O'Sullivan, and we've now got this fantastic battle uh, for the title, and uh, it'll be resolved in our final F4 race at 2.30. Uh, Zach, you're, what, four points behind? Uh, uh, now, first of all, there's a question mark possibly over uh, a penalty for overtaking under the safety car. Have you heard anything about that? Uh, no, I haven't. Um, I hate to break it to you. <laughs> I could only see the safety car boards across the start-finish line, and from then I, was, I thought I was ahead of um, my teammate. So, um, yeah, I think the flares get released from the start-finish line outwards. So, um, from when it kind of gets seen on TV to when we actually see them is pretty different, I think. Yeah. Um, and it's been the same in the past this year. But regarding the race, yeah. 
it was always going to be hard. Uh, there's only one real wet line around here, so I'm um, overtaking. If you go to the inside, there's less grip, and you can never really make the move, um, as I showed in the last lap, trying to do something with, against Alex. What was the motivation with the championship possibilities in mind uh, of actually getting past Alex in those last couple of laps? Obviously, it would have been quite nice to get past Alex, uh, more, mainly for the race win and just to go into the last round equals. So, um, yeah, not ideal to get, not get past him, um, but I gave it a good shot. And a quick thought, four-point gap, you're, you're alongside each other for the final round. Thought about that? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, it'll be good fun, um, and we'll see where we end up at the end of the race, really. OK, congratulations, Thanks. Zach, on the second place today. Right behind you, your championship challenger, uh, Luke Browning. And Luke is coming in now, and uh, let's have his thoughts uh, on the climax of the F4 championship battle, which is coming up at 2.30. Uh, Luke, four points ahead, it's not enough, is it? Uh, well, I'm not too sure about that. Um, the safety car restart was quite interesting. I saw two or three cars overtake each other um, that really shouldn't have been under safety car board, so we'll have to see how that gets investigated. Did you but, think at that time that that might be a possibility, that there might be penalties flying for that? Oh, precisely, yeah. I just knew, because um, I think O'Sullivan overtook Mansell, so I thought, if, as long as I'm at, uh, ahead of Mansell, I'll then outscore O'Sullivan. So I just sat there and thought, I'll, I'll, I'll grab the points and um, I'll out outscore O'Sullivan anyway. So. Yeah, it's um, a good result for me. OK, we'll see what the stewards say. Quick thought from you about what lies ahead at 2.30. Uh, it's going to be an exciting race. Starting from pole, uh, it'll be similar conditions to this, maybe a little bit drier, so it'll be, uh, it'll be one for the fans. So an amended result for the race here, round 25 of the championship. A penalty for Zach O'Sullivan for passing under yellows. Alex Connor still takes the win. Luke Browning second from Christian Mansell with Zach O'Sullivan in fourth. James Headley fifth from Frederick Lubin and Abby Pulling. Eighth was Casper Stevenson ahead of Rima Jafali. The points finish is completed by Roman Belinsky. Eleventh was Matthias Sacaseta and twelfth place, Roberto Faria. Championship standings, Luke Brown now has a 16-point lead to go into the last race. That's ahead of Zach O'Sullivan, Casper Stevenson third from Alex Collar and James Headley. Abby Pulling sixth from Christian Mansell, the rookie champion. Then Roman Belinsky, Frederick Lubin and Roberto Faria completing our top ten. So here's the grid, Luke Browning and Zach O'Sullivan on the front row, James Headley and the returning Roberto Faria on the second row. They're followed by this year's rookie champion, Christian Mansell and Alex Connor. Fourth row, Abby Pulling and Roman Belinsky. Frederick Lubin, runner-up in the rookie category, is on row five with the man who was third in that category, Matthias Sacaseta. Casper Stevenson is next up, the grid completed by Rima Jafali. Lights are on here at Brands Hatch for the final race of the season. And away they go. Luke Browning, remember, only needs to finish in the top five. They get away well. Good start by Browning. Not so good, I don't think, from O'Sullivan. Because, oh, it was, though, because he goes round the outside line and O'Sullivan is doing everything that he can to challenge for the lead. Superstar. It looked like, to me, like he was slightly slower off the line, but came through. That was a very gutsy move by O'Sullivan. Super move round the outside. And Luke Browning's under pressure from James Headley. Headley on the inside line. He'll grab second into the left-hand at Graham Hill Bend and Luke Browning is down to third. Remember, he only needs to finish in the top five to secure the championship, but he won't want to lose any more places. It is drier than earlier on. We said that the wet tends to bring out the best in Luke Browning, but Luke's got a very mature head on his shoulders. He knows exactly what he has to do in this race. And that's Browning. Luke Browning is off the track. How on earth did that happen? Luke Browning is off and Zach O'Sullivan is back in the driving seat to claim the outright championship. Browning gets going again, the CTC Fortec car is going again and it's Mansell that's come through into lead position, Christian Mansell. How on earth did we miss that? Zach O'Sullivan's further back in the mix in fourth place, has lost two positions. We'll see if we can catch up and see what happened. So you're looking here, o O'Sullivan the leader at this point, James Headley is P2, and just a spin for Luke Browning. Headley goes off, there must be something down on the track there because none of the other cars were involved in what happened to Browning. Watch the red and white car, spins around there, must be something on circuit. So Luke Browning is down.
down the order and has got to try and fight back. So it's the rookie, the Australian rookie, Christian Mansell that leads. Abby Pulling second. Roberto Faria is third. That's Luke Browning's teammate this weekend. Brought in after a successful weekend in British F3 last weekend. And look at that. Bang. Bang of wheels through. On the inside of Druids goes Zach O'Sullivan again. This is one of the most determined drives I've seen from O'Sullivan. He knows he's got to get up right to the sharp end in order to take the championship crown. And O'Sullivan's got up into third and sets about now trying to chase down Abby Pulling, who is in second place. Now, where is Browning? Browning is out of the points. He's in 12th place after that spin. So O'Sullivan in third place. Now, O'Sullivan needs, the way things are standing, O'Sullivan needs second position to take the championship crown. So third, where he is at the moment, is not enough. But I think he's got it. We've just seen a change on the leaderboard as we were watching. He has, he's gone through. So now, officially, back into the driving seat for the championship is Zach O'Sullivan. Not sure how he got past Abby Pulling, whether Abby had a wild moment or not. But he's up into P2, and that will afford him 18 championship points. So, Browning now really does need to get up. If Zach gets a win, then... Luke Browning needs to get into the top five. He has an awful lot of work to do because he's way behind at the moment. Rima Jafali's in He's not even in the points at the moment, Luke Browning, but we've still got a quarter of the race to go. O'Sullivan crosses the line. The gap was three seconds. Mansell to O'Sullivan, the two Carlin teammates. Now, will we get Carlin team orders here? Will Mansell know that O'Sullivan is behind him and O'Sullivan could do with the win? Mansell won't want to give it up. He's paid for his seat in the team. It's going to be no question at the moment with a 1-2 for Carlin that they will take the team honours. Here is the scenario, two points. We'll see Zach O'Sullivan take the championship title here and it will be O'Sullivan's ninth win of the season. It will put him one win clear of Lando Norris's total in 2015. Lando having eight wins ten pole positions O'Sullivan only picking up three poles over the course of the year so Lando was the more prolific pole setter here is the man who has, is going to be feeling so so frustrated, the youngster from Cheshire you can see the dirt on the outside of the tyres trying to close down on Sacazetta and get into the points here in 10th place. So this is the battle. Two things we need to watch. One, is O'Sullivan going to pass Mansell for the lead? And secondly, how far up the order, if any further, can Luke Browning get? Browning trying to close down. It's O'Sullivan with the fastest lap of the race, so he's very much fired up. And I've got to say that O'Sullivan's start was absolutely superb. He, he looked slow off the line, but got into paddock, round the outside, gutsy manoeuvre to get him up front, but had that issue come across the line. This move, if he can do it on Sagazetta, will take him into the points and score his first point of the race, or potential point. Sagazetta, in 10th place ahead of him, is the last of the point scorers at the moment, so he's closing down. But Sagazetta is a Carlin driver, teammate of Zach O'Sullivan and Christian Mansell, who's out front. He's not going to make it easy anyway because he's paid for his seat time and he's paying for every point that he could get and it's been good to see Sagazetta in the points now it's starting to rain as well now this could play into the hands now what will they do with the race here's the battle for the lead and he's gone out wide that was very definitely I think team orders or respect within the team because Mansell allows O'Sullivan through that makes the job even harder and look at that O'Sullivan's going wide on the very wet run that we've got here what a way to end the season. So O'Sullivan there, very clearly, Mansell has got the pace, but O'Sullivan set the fastest lap. And he's in front of him, past the end of sector one. Nobody lighting up the timing screens from the top two from this. But you can see the rain perfectly on that now. What a... Now they're on slick tyres, so this is going to potentially be a dangerous scenario. And it's a difficult decision here for the race organisers. If it gets dangerous, You'll want to stop the race for everybody's sake, safety-wise, but it's the last race of the year, and we've got a potential champion here trying to work his way through the field, and arguably these conditions absolutely ideal for the CTC-sponsored car of Luke Browning. That's the line they go again, so 
O'Sullivan from Mansell battle on here for third. Abby pulling under pressure from Roberto Farrier. Frederick Lubin running well in fifth place. This is a great strong drive to wrap up the season for Frederick Lubin. Did well in cart, so, so slippery out there now. Farrier, the Brazilian, looks up the inside line. Abby pulling has a little bit more momentum, but Lubin's having a go in the Arden Red Arrow round the outside. Great stuff by Frederick Lubin, who was on pole position for race two. Struggles on the brakes. Belinsky's coming down the inside line to make a pass as well. Back with the leaders right at the other end of Cooper straight at the moment. That four-way battle for third, if that ends in tears, that could open up the way for Luke Browning, who's now up into 10th place to come through and get into the points, and we're at the halfway stage of the race. If you're an official, though, what would you do? How would you call this? Because it's clearly they're not on the right tyres for the conditions. Or well, getting told now that he's going to be a red flag here at Brands Hatch. We're very nearly into the second half of the race so O'Sullivan the race leader whether it's a red and checker I don't think we're far enough into the race to do that but Luke Browning if we get a restart and again time is an absolute premium here at Brands Hatch we've still got the touring car finale to get underway and complete as well so we are going to be very much reliant on news coming through from race control as to how this is going to be done will it be red and checker we're only halfway through the race so my feeling is that we could well wind up going for the restart. Carlin, by the look of it, in a good enough position to grab the team's cup from Fortec. Well, we're just getting news now through from race control that the race will not be restarted. So will it now? Does that make it a half points race? In which case, we've got to get the abacus out uh, and have a look. So if it's half points, Browning gets half a point. And Zach O'Sullivan gets 12 and a half points. And the gap, if this is the scenario, was 16. So by my maths, if it's half points, Browning is provisionally the champion. That's by my maths, as we already know from my chats, as we already know with my chats with Paul O'Neill, that is not necessarily my strong point, but O'Sullivan looks as if he thinks he's got the championship. But Half a race is half points, surely. We'll wait for confirmation from the officials. But O'Sullivan thinks he's got it, but the rest of us think there might be a case that uh, as we weren't quite halfway through, or just about halfway through the race, that it should be half points. And we've had that scenario before. Remember, wet races at Croft, which have been stopped, we have had half points. And I reckon, if that is the case, and as I say, we're entirely reliant on information coming through from the F4 Championship. Apologies for the confusion here, but you'll understand that it's a scenario that we didn't expect. This is what happened on the opening lap. Br Browning the third car, you can see the car ahead of him. James Headley went off as well. And Browning had that spin. We think that was on the wet part of the circuit. Maybe fluid down on the track that caught him and James Headley and one other car out as well. And that meant that he was at the back of the field. So it is half points. And as we thought, Luke Browning is the champion. It was half points for half a race. Luke Browning champion by four points from Zach O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan thinks he's won the championship. He's going to be bitterly disappointed, but I'm sure he will understand the scenario that Luke Browning has come through, grabs half a point. Have we ever had that before, where half a point in one race is... Uh, takes that four point gap so we still wait for the official confirmation but well done to everybody in our graphics team for putting that together so quickly uh zach o'sullivan we think second christian mansell has hauled himself up to seventh in the championship just ahead of roman Belinsky, which is superb and uh so browning so zach o'sullivan does zach o'sullivan does does get the win as i said and will go ahead of Lando Norris in terms of the number of wins that he took. Lando, of course, up in F1 now, had eight wins in uh, his championship. We gather they haven't been told that graphic yet in the pit lane, and, and I really do feel sorry for Zach O'Sullivan. And it, I think half points is exactly right. We'll get the race result for you in just a moment as soon as we can. But what a year for both O'Sullivan and indeed Luke Browning. 
So here is the result of the half distance race, round 26 of the championship. Zach O'Sullivan takes the win and half winning points. Christian Mansell in second from Abby Pulling, Roberto Farrier fourth, Frederick Lubin fifth from Roman Belinsky, and then Casper Stevenson seventh from Alex Connor and James Headley. Luke Browning completing the top 10 ahead of Matthias Sacaseta and Rima Jafali in 12th place. Last year's champion, of course, was Zane Maloney for Carlin. It's Fortec that take the honours this year. I think, looking from the body language, I think Zach has heard, and he's going to be, you can see we've got F4 Championship officials who are there. And uh, Oh, Zach, I mean, what a way to uh, end the championship. Obviously, that race being curtailed, um, you've come home winner of the race, but uh, that's not really the win that you wanted, is it? Uh, well, yeah, I was winner of the championship a couple of minutes ago, <laughs> so um, I don't really care too much about the race. Uh, yeah, I came into this weekend just wanting to, all I had to do really was beat Luke. Um, it's simple as that. We came in on equal points. Um, I thought I got a bit of an unjust penalty in the race before. Um, so going into this race, I had quite a big disadvantage going in. Um, I didn't really think much of it, but I kind of worked out on the sighting laps really where this oil was on the track. I managed to dodge it, but um, it is what it is. I'm not too happy, as you can probably tell. Um, yeah, I guess we move on to next year. But, but just reflecting back on, on the rest of your season, Zach, I mean, so much to be proud of. So much has gone Sorry, really well There's a lot of you. hail. I can't really hear you. I was just saying, reflecting back on your season, so much to be proud of and what you have achieved. Yeah, exactly. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I won the championship on track, uh, won the race. So, yeah, I'll go home happy tonight. But, um, yeah, I've really um, matured a lot of the driver throughout most of the year. Um, so, yeah, I'm happy with my performance. It's such a bad way to end it. Thank you. Thanks, Zach. And I think um, Luke Browning has uh, now made his, uh, his way up. And, uh, Luke, I mean, you must have thought that was absolutely gone. So, for, for, for the race to finish as it did and you to be uh, proclaimed the champion, how's that feel? Oh, my God. I mean, the stress. I came, I came out turn one and there's literally just a straight up oil patch from apex to exit. And we all go around there, lose it. And um, I just, I couldn't believe it. I there's a few crosswords in the helmet, to say the least, but we've done it. And uh, yeah, I couldn't be more happy. A massive thank you to everyone. And, um, you know, the rain saved me, which it usually does. I mean, Zach was just talking about the fact that he was quite happy racing out there. But I mean, I can, I can hear it coming down really, really heavily now. You must be thinking on all sorts of levels, that was definitely the right decision to stop that race. Oh, it's like a monsoon outside, honestly. You should see it. Well, you can see me. I've walked up and I'm absolutely drenched. But I'll tell you what, the Forte guys have just been absolutely phenomenal this year. I mean, I thought we'd had the biggest dose of bad luck there in, um, <laughs> on the first lap, and then it just comes straight back to us. So, you know, some things are meant to be. So what a, what a season it's been. Just just pick out some of the highlights, obviously, aside from this championship win. I mean, doing the triple crown at Alton, I mean, that has to be, you know, tip top of anyone's career. You know, at home, doing the triple there was absolutely massive. Uh, you know, the first year with Fortec, it was just uh, all the people have been so friendly to me and I just can't tell you the feelings that I'm going through right now. I'm sure you will be making the most of the, uh, of the celebrations tonight. Well deserved. Congratulations, uh, F4 champion Luke Browning. Finally, a big thank you to all frontline workers for everything they've done over this difficult year. And we look forward to seeing you all in person in 2021.